this one's a $1,500 payment from the ATO, taxable though, um, paid per fortnight for your employees. Uh, how it works is that it starts off on the 30th of March, so you can start getting that payment um, from the 30th of March, but that first payment you're gonna get from the ATO is in the first week of May. So they're gonna back pay you for, for up to the 30th of March. And basically from what I heard, you get paid monthly in arrears. So every month, you'll report to the ATO um, on your turnover. So the ATO will physically pay this out to your bank account. So this 1,500, just so you know, lasts for six months as well. But the unfortunate thing is that from 30th of March all the way to May, you have to fork out the payment yourself. So I have some employers that are waiting till, till May to, to apply. So they just tell the employees, look, we can't, we can't fork out the payment. We don't have enough cash flow. So we'll just wait till May and then we'll apply then, get the payment and then we'll pay you for it. This payment is still in the rears. So you understand that the, the employee still has to work for the first two weeks but you at least get the payment like on a monthly basis moving from there, from May. To be eligible, you need to show there's a 30% reduction of turnover. And how you compare that turnover reduction is you compare it to the same period uh, compared 12 months ago. So for example, April to June, if you report on a quarterly basis, you need to compare your 2020 April to June to your April to June 2019. And if there's a 30% reduction of income uh, reported in your business activity statements, more than likely you'll be eligible for this JobKeeper payment. Yes, and yes, I know I said like, you know, how do you, how do you tell the future, right? So the tax office has indicated that you have to forecast and estimate what your income is. So for businesses that are severely affected by um, the COVID-19, for example, gyms, beauty industry, restaurants, hospitality, um, hotel industries are severely affected and they can tell from, from um, just looking at it they're going to have a 30% reduction compared to last year. A common question that's asked by our clients is that oh, what happens if I started my business 12 months ago or less than 12 months ago? I don't really have any proof that my income is reduced or from you know April to June I was making zero or ten thousand dollars and now I'm making you know fifty thousand but 50,000 is still less compared to what I was making earlier in the year. So those cases, the tax office knows that for startup businesses, there's a bit of um, room and exceptions. So the tax office has basically said to them that they have discretion to, uh, to give you this JobKeeper payment as well. So you just need to apply and if you believe that there is a 30% reduction, even if you weren't running the business 12 months ago, you can still apply as long as you can prove your case that there is a 30% reduction in your income. So if you're a self-employed sole trader and you just employ yourself and you pay yourself wages, but it's just from like the profits of the business, you can still apply to get this. You just need to report on a monthly basis and show that you had a 30% reduction. Even if you don't report BASIS or GST, you can still apply and get this um, 1,500 per fortnight. And again, like I said, it's under the ATO discretion. So if you can't prove the 12 months through the BASIS, if you don't lodge business activity statements, the ATO can still decide to give you this JobKeeper payment. So if you think that you, can, you have a reduction of 30%, I suggest that you apply anyway, or speak to your uh, accountant and ask your accountant to apply. Full-time and part-time employees are automatically eligible as long as they've been employed from the 1st of March. And um, casual employees have to be employed for more than 12 months. There was a complete big uproar about 12 months. So people tried to argue that there are some industries like a hospitality industries, there aren't casuals that work for more than 12 months at times because they jump ship a lot. Or there's like, you know, building industry where you have laborers that just work as casuals as well. And they jump on different jobs and different employers. Um, unfortunately, the tax office has basically said, tough luck, go get job seeker payments from the Centrelink rather than getting a job keeper payment. If you, if you have an employee that's a casual and under 12 months, you won't get the JobKeeper uh, payment for this casual employee. Um, also, as an employee, you also have to have citizenship, PR or permanent visa, and you have to be over 16 years old. So you can't apply for anyone that's under 16. So let's just say that we've got two employees 
uh, for this business and one's a full-timer and one's a part-timer. So one full-timer gets paid $3,000 per fortnight. So this one's double the JobKeeper payment. In this case here, the part-timer only gets $1,000 per fortnight. So altogether they pay $4,000 for all his wages on a fortnightly basis. The employer will apply for JobKeeper payments and then for each employee, they will get $1,500 per fortnight. It doesn't matter if this employee doesn't work the hours to get $1,500, he or she will still automatically get the $1,500. So how it works is it gets paid to the employer and the employer receives two times $1,500 per fortnight, which equates to $3,000. And that $3,000 has to be paid out to the employees. And the thing is, this $3,000 isn't used to pay for this employee only. It's actually split. So $1,500 has to go to this um, employee and the other $1,500 has to go to this employee. So take note, this part-timer only works, you know, uh, 15 hours a fortnight and usually is entitled to $1,000. In this case here, the government's actually stating that you still have to boost them up to $1,500 per fortnight. The um, business owner can't take that $1,500 and um, pocket it. They have to pay that out, even if the employee didn't work the hours of the full $1,500. The beauty of it though is you don't have to pay super on the amount on top that you're paying. So for example here, you'll pay super annuation on the $1,000, but you won't pay super annuation on the $500 extra you're paying on top. So that's how that works. In this case here, the employer is short $1,500, so they have to take money out of their own pocket to pay that $1,500 to keep these employees in check and keep them on their books. Obviously, you can reduce the hours and you can talk to them about that, but that's a different um, situation. So you're allowed to reduce this person's hours to get them down to $1,500 if your business can't afford to have these guys on the books full time. So you have to pay super on top, if that employee was working for you. If the employee wasn't working for you, and you stood them down and you still paid that job keeper about 1,500 to them, you don't need to pay super for that because they didn't actually physically work. So there was no ordinary hours and it just gets um, paid directly to them and they just get the 1,500. But take note that 1,500 is gross wages. So you have to take the tax out and pay it to the tax office when you do your best. If you did fire any employees or terminate any employees, you can still rehire them just as long as they were employed as of 1st of March. So they were on the books as of 1st of March. Yeah, and you, re you fired them after 1st of March, you can rehire them and put them on the JobKeeper payment. It's actually up to the discretion of the employer. If the employee feels unsafe and they've spoken to the employer and said, I don't really want to go to work anymore, the employer has the choice to you know, terminate their, their um, job or also keep them on JobKeeper for the time being and stand them down for the next couple of months and then rehire them. It's actually under the employer's discretion. The employer decides if they want to um, apply for JobKeeper for this employee.